Hey buckaroos and buckarettes, good to be back with you. And in today's edition of MATLAB for Non-Believers, I want to talk to you about how to solve systems of nonlinear equations. Before we get into the details, maybe we ought to figure out what is exactly does that mean? What's a system of equations? Well, a system of equations is more than one equation grouped together, and the variables in those equations each appear in more than one equation. Mathematicians call that a, a system, or really more specifically, a coupled system of equations. So a system of equations is just a group, and they have the property you can't solve them individually. You have to solve them as a group. So that's what makes it a system. What's nonlinear mean? Well, about like you'd figure. If you draw a picture of your equation, a plot, and you get a straight line, it's a linear equation. If you get a curved line, it's a nonlinear equation. There are methods, very popular ones, get used a lot, that only work on linear equations. There are systems of linear equations. There are other methods, different methods, that only work on systems of nonlinear equations. So if you draw out all your equations and even one of them has, it makes a curve, if even one of them is nonlinear, you have a nonlinear system. Okay? The linear solvers only work as long as every single equation in the, the system is linear. So let's start with an example, okay? Now here's one I made up, but it looks an awful lot like, like things you'd see in your homework um, in math or physics or whatever. You see stuff like this an awful lot. So this is probably representative. Okay, that's a system of two equations, and the system is nonlinear. This equation is a parabola, that one's a straight line, this one's curved, this one's straight. The fact that even one of these is curved means it's a nonlinear system. And the fact that the variables both appear in both equations, that makes it coupled. So you can't just solve this one and then solve that one. Okay. By the way, what do we mean by solving this system? Some geek like me tells you to do this. Well, what exactly does that mean? What you're trying to do is you're fi trying to find a value of x and a corresponding value of y that makes both of these equations true. So that's what they're saying. Find a single x and a single y that makes both of those true. Well, if it's a single x and a single y that makes both of those true, that means if you plot them, one of them has to cross over the other one. That The point where both of those is true is the point where they cross over each other. So. Let's see. In MATLAB, like as usual with these things, there are a couple different ways to do this. Rather than just launch into MATLAB, let's see if I can get you the big picture. Here's your solution methods that you can use. One, graphical. Just draw a picture and see where one crosses the other. Now that'll work. Assuming your, your uh, uh, curves are, or the solutions are real, if they're imaginary, now you have to do it on the real imaginary plane. So this is, this is limited. And it's helpful, but it's not general. I mean, you, this, is, this is not the way, it's a good place to start, but it's not a good place to finish. Now, if we're going to draw graphs in MATLAB, there's two ways to do it. You may know this already, but in case you don't, we'll use the plot command. Okay, the plot command works when you have lists of numbers, kind of like in Excel where you have two lists of numbers and you, you, you highlight them and then go to insert plot. Well, the plot command in MATLAB uh, assumes you've got a list of X's and a list of Y's, or whatever you call them, but let's call them X and Y, and you just write this out. Just write out X and Y. Those are lists of numbers that just plots Y against X. The other way to do it is a command called easy plot. and we'll call this y. Okay? You've defined a, a function y in terms of x, but you've defined a function. You don't actually have a list of numbers, you only have a function. Well, that's what easyplot does. Plots the function for you without have, making you grind out a list of numbers. So that's number one. Number two, numerical. Okay, Not, a, not, a, not graphical anymore. It's pushing around uh, kind of numbers inside the program. It's doing numerical calculations and you'll get numbers when you're done. Number three is symbolic. <coughs> that sounds kind of existential, but all that means is instead of the computer pushing around numbers, it's pushing around letters. And here you've got two choices. You can do this on paper, which is 
what you were doing all through junior high school when you were learning how to do this in the first place, or you can push this through um, the symbolic processor in MathCAD or MATLAB. It's called MuPad. That's the there's a symbolic processor. It's uh, called MuPad. You can run in MuPad directly, or you can just issue symbolic commands from the command prompt. And in case you you care about these sort of things, MuPad is also the symbolic processor that appears in MathCAD. Alrighty, so there's there's the big idea. There's there's the um, process we're going to follow here. I'll start here. I'll take you through there, and we're going to use something called the F solve command. Just in case you're too actually actually I'm not. I'm going to use something called F zero. It's even easier. I'm assuming you want the simplest possible way to get an answer out of MATLAB. Well, that's the way to do it in this problem. So I'm going to show you all three of these approaches. So with that done, let's go to my computer. All right, got MATLAB open. Let's go ahead and use MATLAB to solve our system of two equations using the three methods we outlined on the board. The first one is graphical. I'm just going to make a plot. I'm going to draw a picture of the answer. And to, the first way to do that is to use the MATLAB plot command. And if I say plot x, y, I have to have two lists of numbers, x and y. So I'm going to say x is minus 2 to 4. And see, there it is. It echoed it back to the screen for me. That's called an echo. And I'm going to make y1 equals x squared minus 2x plus 2. This isn't going to work. Watch. Yep, didn't work. See right there, that x squared? What I'm trying to do there is multiply a vector times a vector. Well, there's three ways to do this. One is a dot product, one is a cross product, and one is to go through element by element. Well, that's the one I want, but MATLAB doesn't know that's what I want. So I'm going to hit the up arrow and recall that command, and I'm going to add a dot there. That's MATLAB syntax. That's MATLAB lingo for work on these vectors one at a time. There. Now I've got it. So I have x and y1. I'll have y2 here in a minute. In fact, let's make y2 right now just to get it out of the way. So I've got three lists now, x, y1, y2. So I'm going to plot, and it'll let uh, x, y1, and I, um, the plot command, whoops, the plot command will let me plot, uh, do two plots on the same axes if I want. There they are. Okay, so I can see the, uh, I can see the where the, the crossing point is. The problem is, those plots are pretty rough. That, that curve right there isn't too good. There's not enough points on it. Well, let's do this. Let's go ahead and put more points on it. I just typed in x equal and I'm hitting the up, care, up arrow on my keyboard. That pulls up a, the last command that starts with x equal. And let's say I want a, the uh, list to go from zero, or minus 2 to 4 in steps of 0.1 instead of 1. Now I definitely want to suppress the echo. No, I don't, I don't want that whole list of numbers uh, showing up on the screen. So there it is. So you can't show me the whole list now. So it says there's now 61 numbers. Remember that 61, not 60, because it has a 0 in it. And I can't plot x versus y1 now because of the different lengths. I haven't recalculated y1 or y2. So I'm just going to pull that up, run it again. See, there's the list. I forgot to suppress it. And let's go to y2. And I'll put this, and I'll suppress that. There we got it. Now, the screen is pretty uh, messy right now. If I type in CLC, that clears the screen. And all my uh, vectors are the right length, so that'll work. So I'll say plot and just hit the up arrow again. Hit enter, and there they are. Now let's say I want a, a grid on there. Well, there's two ways to do it. I can type in grid here, or I can go over here. I'm going to type in grid at the command window. And just pull that back up here. There it is. So that looks about right, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a nice clean plot. I can go edit this plot and change the formatting if I like, but that's good. So there's version number one. Now I'm going to clear the, when I type in clear, that actually clears out the workspace. There. Now I don't have anything in memory. If I want to plot something now, I have to type everything in again. So what I'm going to do now is instead of make a list of numbers, I'm actually going to define what MATLAB calls an anonymous function. Okay. There called a function handle. But right there, I've just defined a function. It lives in workspace as a function. That's not a list of numbers anymore. And I'll do the other one as well. So 
So I've got them both. Now, and I can't I can't use plot because plot only works on lists of numbers, but I can use easy plot. And I'm going to say y1 and go from minus 2 to 4. This is the syntax here. You have to give it a little list. It says the x range. And there it is. Now, see that orange text here? That's a warning that says basically tells me that the uh, calculation would speed up if I vectorize it, if I put that dot in there. Now, you know, I want to add another curve to this. So the way I'm going to do this, actually, let me move this over so we can see everything at once. I'm going to say hold on, H-O-L-D, hold on. That means hold on to that plot, turn the hold on, so that I can add something else to it. And the thing I want to add to it is Y2. And there it is. That's the same plot we had before, now made with functions instead of numbers. All right, so there's the graphical solution done. I'm going to clear everything out again. All right, the next one is numerical. Now there's a function called uh, F0 that finds roots of nonlinear functions. It's a MATLAB command. And what right now what I've got is uh, two equations and two unknowns. But since they both equal y, they must equal each other. I'm going to go ahead and write a function as a function of x. And I'm going to write the first y. Now, remember, if the functions are equal, both equal to y, they must both be equal to each other. So I can set them equal to each other. I'll have x squared minus 2x plus 2 equals 2x plus 1. Well, if I want to subtract 2x plus 1 from both sides, I'll get this. And if I want to find for where that equals 0, find the root of that equation, that's also the solution to uh, the uh, system of two equations. That's the x value. I'm going to go ahead and hit that. And there is a command called f0. All right, and I'm going to, I need to give it a function name. Well, my function name is f. That's, I defined that right there. And I need to give it a starting point. Well, I'm just going to give it a starting point of 0 and tell it to look. All right, there's one of the equation, the solutions. Where's the other one? Yeah, let's, let's, let's look at it a different place. Oop, there's the other one. Okay, those two numbers are correct, and they match the crossover points in those two plots. Now, the last thing, last way to do this is symbolically. All right, let me uh, let me tell you, let me clear the memory out here. Just we'll start clean. Now, I can do symbolic calculations in MATLAB, and they're nice, but uh, don't use them as a as an excuse to stop thinking. A lot of the equations you're going to use don't have symbolic answers. And just ramming them through the symbolic processor without thinking about what you're doing sometimes doesn't work. So what I'm going to do now is define a symbolic variable x. There it is right now. SYMS is a command that defines this as symbolic. Now MATLAB distinguishes symbolic from numeric variables, so you can't switch back and forth easily. I'm going to do exactly what I did before. Okay, there's there's the equation that would have been on the left side, and there's the equation that would have been on the right side when I equated the two. There we go. There's there, it, what it did is it cleaned everything up. It, it expanded this out to get that quadratic equation. Now I'm going to solve f equals zero. Okay, that's a, and that's a that's a double equal sign as a symbolic definition. And there they are. Well, that's this that's a I don't know, is that right? Let's try. Hang on a second here. Paste that in. Oh yeah, there's one of them. And there's the other one. So there we have it. We've done three different solution methods. We did graphical, both with the plot command and the easy plot command. 
we did numerical using F0 and we did symbolic. Now you can do this on paper. I had that li listed on the board. And we're actually using a, a processor inside MATLAB called MuPad that does our symbolic processing for us. So there you go. I hope this helps. We'll talk to you next time.